बसमीम् Assalamualaikum how are you students today our course is inorganic material chemistry and course code is cam 3115 in this subject we will discuss properties of advanced materials in your syllabus there are different properties of advanced materials mechanical properties electrical properties optical properties dielectric magnetic and some chemical corrosion properties that you have to uh, study in this course first we will start we will start from mechanical properties in this lecture we will discuss mechanical properties and its detail key concepts that we will uh, discuss in this uh, uh, course and uh, in this top under this topic are properties of advanced materials and first we will discuss mechanical properties uh, for mechanical properties some parameters uh, are discussed or important to discuss that then these parameters are these basic terms will be uh, stress strain hardness and strength we, uh, we will talk about elasticity and plasticity ductility and brittleness toughness malleability and then we will discuss what are advanced materials and what are nano materials then the properties are, uh, properties of advanced material we will discuss mechanical properties and uh, then we will discuss applications that are related to mechanical properties so or oh, when we talk about mechanical properties then we should know that what are mechanical properties so properties which can be determined are observed by the application of mechanical force or load that are known as mechanical properties so what is mechanical force mechanical force is a force that requires direct physical contact on that material we will further discuss mechanical properties in detail so we can also define mechanical properties as the properties of materials that determine its behavior under applied forces so it is known as mechanical property and mostly mechanical properties are related to elastic or plastic behavior of that material and these properties are expressed as a function of stress strain as we already discussed that key concepts that we study that are important to uh, know are stress strain and that can be strength and other properties etc so a sound knowledge of mechanical properties of materials provide the basis for predicting behavior of materials under different load condition and designing the component out of them mechanical properties uh, important kyun hai isme ek to uh, different up uh, isme different terms jo different jo uh, condition unko padte hain jaise humne stress ki baat ki strain ki baat ki ya humne toughness uski hardness different uske uh, parameters hain jinko mechanical properties ko jo describe karti hain so किसी भी uh, अगर uh, किसी भी uh, जो प्रोडक्ट है उसको आप बना रहे हैं मटेरियल को सिंथेसाइज कर रहे हैं तो उसकी मेकेनिकल प्रॉपर्टीज या मैकेनिकल स्ट्रेंथ उसकी हर एस्पेक्ट से देखना बहुत ज़रूरी होती है कि वो अंडर दैट कंडीशन उस लोड को जो है वो बेयर कर सकती हैं या नहीं कर सकती उसकी जो डिज़ाइनिंग की गई है वो उस एनवायरमेंट के लिए परफेक्ट है या नहीं है तो इस परपज के लिए हम मैकेनिकल प्रॉपर्टीज जो है उसको स्टडी करते हैं फर्स्ट थिंग दैट वी विल डिस्कस इन दिस टॉपिक इज स्ट्रेन एंड स्ट्रेस सो डिफरेंट एक्सपीरियंसिस एक्सपेरिमेंट शोज दैट एनी मटेरियल सब्जेक्टेड टू अ लोड मे आइर डी फॉर्म इट मे हील्ड और ब्रेक डिपेंडिंग ऑन इट्स magnitude of load 
and the nature of material so any material uh, that is subjected to uh, any force that may deform or they may break or they may elongate or there may be change in length or its shape so it's this change depend on the magnitude of load and the nature of that material first we will discuss uh, stress what is stress it is defined as it is internal resisting force offered by the body to resist the deformation per unit cross sectional area of that body so mathematically we can say that stress is expressed as a force divided by cross sectional area in this figure on the left side you can see that f is force that is applied on both sides of that material that body and a not is cross sectional area so stress is denoted by sigma and it is uh, you can express it as force divided by cross sectional area or you may write it is as f over a not before discuss before we discuss uh, stress what is strain strain is the dimensional response given by material against mechanical loading or force or deformation that is produced per unit length so mathematically we can say that strain is a change in length divided by original length so it is the ratio of change in dimension like change in length of that material to the original dimension or the original length of that material so strain will be delta l over l delta l, l is change in length and l is its original length before that is before applying the force next is harness so it is property of material that resists penetration in this example in figure you can see that you can clearly understand the hardness it is property of material that resists penetration koi bhi force jab aap apply karte hain us kisi bhi material pe to us penetration ko resist karti hai so next property uh is strength the property of material that resists the external load or force without breaking is known as strength and strength determines the ability of material to withstand stress without failure in this picture you can see if you have a, a flexible ball point and you apply force on it but it will not break after applying the force it means it have a strength it resists the external force without breaking so the the maximum stress that any material will withstand before destruction is called ultimate strength so in this figure in both figures you can see the example of strength next we will discuss elasticity the property of material by which it returns to its original shape after repo- removal of load or force it is known as elasticity you can take the example in this figure you can see uh, elastic if you apply a force if you stretch it it will go back to its original shape then it is known as elasticity this property is known as elasticity in this example you can see these two blocks that on the left side you apply a force on it and on right side you can see there is a change in its length but after removing that force it comes back to it returns to its original shape then we say this property is elasticity and this material has elasticity in it so 
it cannot break or it cannot change its shape after removal of that load or force. We can also define elasticity as the property of material by virtue of which deformation caused by applied load disappears upon removal of load. That you apply any force and then after removing that force that material returns to its original shape then it is known as this property is known as elasticity so elasticity of materials is the power of coming back to its original position after deformation when the stress or load is removed in this picture in this figure you can see that this uh, maroon color this first on the left side you can see that this is original material and then you can also see in the second image you can see when force is applied the bonds are stretched and the length of that material is changed but after removing that force these bonds return back to its original position and that material shape is not changed it's come back to its original shape it means this material is elastic and this material have elastic properties it has elasticity in it because after removal of force it returns to its original shape without changing its shape it come back to its original shape so we can say that elastic property is reversible property Next term is uh, plasticity. Before we discuss elasticity in which you apply, apply a force on a material and that material after removal of force come back to its original shape. But what happens in plasticity? The proper, it is property of material by which permanent material deformation takes place after the removal of load or force. For example, in this picture on the left side you can see L that material you apply a force and the length of material is L but when you remove that force the force after removal of that force the change in length occurs like the original shape of that material has changed deformation takes place so this property is known as plasticity in which permanent material deformation takes place even after you have removed the force or that load We can also define plasticity as the plasticity of material is its ability to undergo some degree of permanent deformation without rupture or failure. So plastic deformation will take place only after the elastic limit, a limit is exceeded. It increases with increase in temperature. So in this figure you can see the uh, left side first image you can see this is original length of that material and you can also see the position of uh, that atoms or bonds after you apply a force then what happens then these bonds stretch and there is a change in number of positions of bonds and atoms and after removal of that force you can see that it returns to it return back but it cannot returns to its original shape so it means this material don't have elasticity but it has plasticity that it is not completely break but it cannot come back to its return to its original shape so there will be a little bit change than that of original change in length than that of original material so in this graph you can also see the plastic uh, plasticity term and plastic mean or plasticity mean that this change is permanent it will not go back to its original shape This graph shows the stress and the strain curve. 
it shows the elasticity and plasticity for materials on the x-axis there here is strain and on y-axis stress is applied so in first uh, you can see where is elastic deformation uh, when you apply the stress there will be elastic deformation then you apply a force and it will come back to its original position up to that red point red line after that that you further apply that stress or force and its length will change it's, or it will be changed from its original length but it will not break further applying stress then you can see their necking will appear like before breakage that material will become more weak and there will be one point when you further apply the stress it will break this material will break so it this graph show the curve shows the elasticity plasticity and the failure of stress and that up to which extent that material can withstand or can bear that stress so next property or term that we can discuss under the mechanical properties is ductility and ductility the property of material by which it can drawn into thin wires without any rupture then we can say that this material is ductile or it has ductility next is uh, brittleness the property of material in which no deformation takes place by the external by the external load and it may break or rupture so it is known as brittleness like it don't have any flexibility when you apply uh, any external force it will directly break or it will rupture so in this figure you can see the tile material and also you can see brittle fractured or brittle material you can see the glass is a example of a brittle material toughness the property of material by which that material can bend that can twist or stretch under high stress without any rupture we can say that it is known as this property is known as toughness ye wo uh, property jisme hum material ko bend kar sake usko twist kare ya stretch kare under pressure under stress or force without any rupture aur usme koi uh, usme break ke jo rupture na ho to us property ko aap kya kehte hain toughness next is malleability and malleability of a material is its ability to be flattened into thin sheets without cracking by hot or cold working so gold is the most malleable metal that can be converted into thin or flattened thin sheets so when it is hammered with the when it is uh, when force is applied or stress is applied then it can be changed into thin sheets without cracking so gold is the best example of malleable metal our topic of discussion is uh, mechanical properties of advanced material so we should also know about advanced materials what are advanced material what is meant by them so an advanced materials can be said to be a material which has engineered properties that are created through the development of specialized process and synthesis technology in advanced materials wo materials hote hain jinko aap ek specific property ke liye usko specific method se aur jo specific process se jo hai usko develop karte hain banate hain aur जिस तरह की आपको प्रॉपर्टी चाहिए होती है उस तरह का मटेरियल आप जो है उसके अकॉर्डिंगली उसको प्रिपेयर करते हैं और उसमें उसका जो है हर उसकी प्रॉपर्टी के लिए मेथड जो है वो स्पेसिफिक यूज होता है वेन वी टॉक अबाउट एडवांस्ड मटेरियल्स दैन द लेटेस्ट मटेरियल्स दैट आर मोस्टली बींग यूज एज advanced materials are nano materials and that are under consideration and that are mostly widely used and studied are nano materials are also known as nanoparticles you also you already 
uh, know about nanoparticles what are nanomaterials you have uh, discussed or you have studied this uh, their introduction so generally I will tell you in one or two lines that what are nanomaterials and nanoparticles so nanomaterials or nanoparticles are that materials which have size in the range of 1 to 100 nanometer and in nanotechnology we define a nanoparticle a particle as it is a small object that behaves as a whole unit with respect to its properties so particles of any shape with dimension that is in the range of 10 raised to the power minus 9 to 10 raised to the power minus 7 meter are called nanoparticles or nanomaterials next we will discuss properties of advanced materials generally we will discuss these properties and uh, why we discuss the properties of uh, study the properties of advanced materials what are their advantages and why we are talking about nanomaterials and later we will go to our main topic that is mechanical properties of advanced materials so uh, nanomaterials have the structural features in between of atoms and bulk materials we can say that nato nanomaterial is in the in between the range of bulk material bulk material can be micro material you may consider it as micro material as a microstructures and atoms that are that are smaller than that nanomaterial so you can say that nanomaterials lie between the micro materials and between the atoms so most microstructure materials have similar properties to that of uh, that to their corresponding bulk materials we can say that if you have any microstructure material and you have a bigger structure than that microstructure then you can say that they have similar properties but if you talk about properties of nanomaterials then these properties are significantly different from those of micro materials or bulk materials so why these uh, nanometer size materials have different properties these properties are different in nanometer size range because of the large fraction of surface atom nanomaterials have large surface to volume ratio so they have a large fraction of surface atoms atoms are exposed on the surface they have a high surface energy and they have a reduced imperfection imperfections there are less defects in nanomaterials so we do not exist in the corresponding uh, bulk materials so we can say that these are the properties by which we can say these are good for different they show different properties from that of bulk materials or micro materials or microstructures so nanomaterials have small dimensions so they have extremely large surface area to volume ratio so this uh, large surface area to volume ratio and smaller size can provide large surface or it can provide more exposed atoms on the surface and more reactants can react on the surface atoms which can result more surface dependent material properties if we can if we talk about catalytic properties or we talk about optical properties then these are surface dependent properties and these are enhanced due to small dimension of nanomaterials and large surface area to volume ratio so this may enhance the properties of bulk materials uh, in uh, case of bulk materials the properties are not very good as in case of nanomaterials for example metallic nanoparticles can be used as very active catalyst many metals that are converted into nanoparticles can be used as active catalyst if we take the example of gold if we uh, take gold in its original form in metallic form that we wear in daily life that is inert but if we uh, synthesize its uh, nanoparticles it can act as a catalyst so chemical sensors from nanoparticles and nanowires that have been synthesized they enhance the sensitivity uh, 
एंड सेंसर्स एक्टिविटी सिमिलरली द केमिकल स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ सर्टेन सम नैनो मेटीरियल्स मे बी इनहानस्ड और मॉडिफाइड मैकेनिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ नैनो मेटीरियल्स कैन बी बैटर दैन द बल्क मेटीरियल फॉर एग्जाम्पल कार्बो नैनो ट्यूब्स आर यूज एज स्ट्रॉगेस्ट मेटीरियल एंड दे कैन गिव स्पीरियर मैकेनिकल प्रॉपर्टीज एंड ड्यू टू देर नैनोमीटर साइज नैनो मेटीरियल्स आर ऑलरेडी known to have many novel properties and we can uh, synthesize nanoparticles according to properties that we require so these properties are also related to the structure of that material so uh, we will discuss this mechanical properties after this we here we describe generally properties of nanomaterials so next we will discuss the mechanical properties of advanced materials so we talk about nanoparticles and nanomaterials they show different mechanical properties relative to their uh, as compared to microparticles or bulk materials that are bigger than bigger than that microparticles or micromaterials so they uh, these nanomaterials provide more effective options for the surface modification of many devices in mechanical strength or they are important to improve the quality of nano manufacturing or nano fabrication so particle uh, size reduction to nanometer range can pose new technological changes challenges such as particle agglomeration so mechanical properties of nanomaterials increases with decrease in size because if size is smaller then there will be less probability of finding imperfections and these imperfections in nanomaterials are dislocations these may be vacancies or some grain boundaries these all terms we will discuss later on so we can say that mechanical properties of nanomaterials increases with the decrease in size because if there will be smaller sizes that will be in nanometer range then there will be less imperfection there will be less defects there will be less dislocations or grain boundaries so strength of materials improves significantly as the particle size decreases due to the perfect free defect free surface in case of nanomaterials we say that there are less defects so their properties can be improved and further hardness and uh, yield strength of material also increases as particle sizes decrease so elasticity and toughness of materials increases as particle size is reduced so all uh, overall we can say that mechanical properties can be improved if the particle size is smaller and this may be due to the smaller dip less number of imperfections and less number of dislocations or less defects so if we talk about industrial importance then there are two materials that are not produced by pressing or calcination or sintering but they have attracted much much attention and they are more interesting and these materials are polymers which contain nanoparticles or nanotubes to improve the mechanical properties or behaviors and other materials are spherically plastic deformed metals which also exhibit significant properties but in second case the later one that are plastic deformed materials they have larger grain size so they are not accepted as nano material they are not we consider them as advanced materials so if we talk about uh, if we talk about industrial uh, scale if, if we want to uh, synthesize material nano materials on larger scale then it is quite difficult to produce that material with the uh, uh, defined grain sizes or defined processes so the experimental studies on mechanical properties of bulk nano materials are not very uh, like enough uh, so for this purpose uh, we can use polymers and we can fill them with nanoparticles or nano rods or nano tubes and 
that can lead to significant improvements or modifications in their mechanical properties. So we can combine two materials, nanomaterials and that uh, other material and we can enhance or improve their properties. So the improvements on the, in the properties may depend on the type of filler and the way in which the filling is, that filling is conducted. So uh, advantages of nanoparticulate filler may be lost if the filler forms aggregate and they can show a large, uh, they can form large particles. So what is aggregation? Actually aggregation or agglomeration happens when small particles stick together and they form aggregates which are of larger sizes. If for example you have uh, nanoparticles in the range of 10 nanometer and when you fill that particle in that in one polymer and they aggregate the property they will form a particle size of uh, bigger than 10 nanometer that can be 20 nanometer or 30 nanometer then the actual property that 10 nanometer uh, particle can give you will be uh, that uh, properties will be lost due to the formation of larger particles and that are formed due to agglomeration or aggregation. So particulate field polymers based nanocomposite exhibit a broad range of failure strength and strength due to the agglomeration or due to aggregation and these failures also depend on the shape of filler which kind of uh, filler you have used and particle shape of the particles are platelets and on the degree of uh, aggregation or agglomeration so if there is no aggregation agglomeration then properties of that original nanoparticles will be remain same but if particles mm, get a higher degree of aggregation the particle size will increase and it will lose its original properties so that material will not mm, uh, bear the strength or strain uh, strength of that material or its properties will be lost due to aggregation so that class of materials in which polymers are filled with silicate particles they show best mechanical properties and are of the greatest economic uh, importance so the larger the particles of the filler are agglomerates the poorer the properties obtain so one if someone is uh, filling that uh, polymer with uh, some nanoparticles or platelets or nanomaterials then it should they should avoid the agglomeration or aggregation of that particles if Particles will be larger, filler particles will be larger due to aggregation, then the properties will be poor. The mechanical properties of that material will be poor or less. So the best composite, uh, composite of that material which two different materials are combined to in, uh, increase or enhance the property of that material. So the best component uh, composites are those filled with nanofibers or nanotubes but uh, some experiments or some uh, research article research uh, shows that composite have uh, sometimes less ductility on the other hand if uh, we use carbon nanotubes it is possible to co produce composite fiber with extremely high strength and strain at rupture so among the most exciting nanocomposites are the polymer ceramic nanocomposites composites where the ceramic phase is in the platelets shaped. So as we, uh, as we discussed in previous uh, previous slide that uh, the shape of uh, filler also affect the properties. So for polymer ceramic nanocomposite, ceramic phase is in platelet shape and it is uh, it can show most exciting properties. So this type of composite is preferred in nature and because it is found in nature and is found in the structure of bones where it consists of crystallized mineral platelets of a few nanometer thickness that are bound together with collagen as the matrix. So in addition to uh, specific properties of interest for a particular application of material, its elasticity, strength, hardness, brittleness, and other properties determine whether an application is possible or not. So no matter, no matter how good 
the electric magnetic chemical or other properties are a material is of no use if it does not fulfill mechanical requirements for example for one material we are saying that it has good electrical properties it has good mechanical uh, it, it has good magnetic properties or chemical properties or other one so if this material if this material is not mechanically strong then there is no use of these properties so uh, this largely depend on the structure and on the kind of chemical bonding and mechanical properties are usually an isotropic an isotropic mean that they depend on the direction of applied force as we apply the force there is a, some change in the length and in case of uh, elasticity that we said that we applied some force and it, there is a change of change in length and it come back to its original shape so this property is an isotropic like they have some dimension or direction there is some dimension for the applied force so uh, for example in we if we take the example of diamond a framework of strong covalent bond is present in diamond that results in higher hardness and compressive strength so we can say that the diamond is more strong due to the framework of strong covalent bonds in it as we discussed that uh, the properties mechanical properties depends on the chemical bonding and the bonds present in that material here we will take the example of ionic crystal ionic crystals can be uh, cleaved or break in different directions in uh, specific directions so uh, in the next figure we will see that when we apply a force the exertion of that force results in cleavage for example if two parts of a crystal experience a mutual displacement by a shearing force ions of like charges come to lie side by side and they will repel each other so we will uh, see this in next figure so in this figure you can see that how shearing force uh, exerted on an ionic crystal and how cleavage mm, may occur and how uh, these uh, similar ion slide uh, lie side by side and they repel each other so what is shearing forces what are shearing forces shearing forces are unaligned forces pushing one part of a body in one specific direction and other part of the body in the opposite direction so uh, in other case if we say that these forces are aligned into each other then they are called compression forces but here we are talking about shearing forces so these are unaligned forces that push one part of a body in one specific direction and other part will move in the opposite direction and in this example you can see that and above that is left side that force is applied from the one side and in this in the opposite direction one force is applied on the right side other is from the left side and the same charges they will uh, this negative and positive charges will slide and then these negative charges will repel each other and cleavage will occur between them due to the repulsion so if we talk about characteristics of nanomaterial with respect to mechanical properties we can say that by uh, reducing the uh, grain size lighter material with enhanced mechanical properties can be produced for example if the size of material is less and its grain size is smaller grain size it means one its crystallites is smaller then material will be uh, lighter and with light material we can produce uh, mechanically strong materials so nanograins are more resistant since they have no defect inside as compared to microgreens so we can say that nanocrystalline copper is three times more resistant than usual copper because nanocrystalline copper has less defects due to which it will be stronger or more mechanical mechanically more strong so they are also more ductile since nanograins nanograin glide is much easier so they can be converted into wires because these nanograins are uh, nanograins uh, glide uh, can glide or slide onto each other and we can convert them into uh, wires 
So uh, uh, these characteristics of nanomaterials, uh, nanomaterials with respect to mechanical properties, uh, we discussed the uh, uh, initial part of it and later uh, we will discuss in other uh, second lecture and uh, also we will discuss the mechanical properties and different characteristics uh, during, according to nanomaterials and then their application related to mechanical properties. What you have to do uh, after a reading or after uh, revising this uh, lecture, you will be able to understand the about uh, nanomaterials, what are advanced materials, and different uh, properties that are uh, studied uh, are discussed under mechanical properties. So uh, there is uh, two. There are two assignments for you. You have to find a recent published article that is related to mechanical properties in which mechanical properties of materials have been discussed. So you can find any materials and you can find its mechanical properties and you can find related article. So you have to uh, find another article in which uh, hardness of that nanomaterial is discussed and in which uh, according to their uh, material synthesis and uh, materials have been synthesized and in which its hardness has been determined or studied or discussed.